In this video, I want to give you a short introduction to solving absolute value inequalities in one variable and graphing them on a number line. This is going to combine solving absolute value equations with solving and graphing simple inequalities in one variable. And just like solving absolute value equations, we will break the inequality into two separate inequalities. And just like solving and graphing simple inequalities, when you multiply or divide by a negative, you must flip the sign of the inequality. And finally, if you studied compound inequalities like unions and intersections, you're going to see an obvious connection here once we get started. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. We have the absolute value of x is greater than 4. So what this is going to look like is we're going to break this into two separate inequalities. And it's going to be x is greater than 4. And basically we found that one just by taking the absolute value bars away. And the other one, and here's where it uh, looks like the solving absolute value equations, is we're going to do the negative side as well except when we do the negative side, we must flip the sign of the inequality. So let's kind of recap what just happened. The absolute value expression was isolated on this one side of the inequality all by itself, and it was greater than this number four. So we broke it into two separate inequalities. X is greater than four, and then X is less than negative four. And again, because we do the negative side, we must flip the sign of the inequality. Okay, so there's no solving to be done here because the x in both cases is already isolated. So now it's just time to graph this inequality. So here's my number line and I'll put a negative four down here and a positive four up here. And so I'll be using open circles for both because it's greater than and less than and there are no equal twos involved here. So for x is greater than 4, it's going to go from positive 4 and move to the right because it's greater than that. And for the negative 4, x is less than, so it'll move to the left because it's less than that. And this is what this graph will look like. And again, I mentioned earlier it will resemble unions and intersections if you've solved compound inequalities. And it looks like right here we have ourselves a compound inequality. And uh, this is a union, actually, and we can write this union as x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 4. So that kind of summarizes everything that we have going here. So here's our first example. In our second example here, we have the absolute value of x minus 3. We're going to add 7 to that, and we're saying that expression is less than or equal to 11. Okay, so in order to solve any absolute value equation or inequality, the first thing we need to do is isolate this absolute value expression. So let's go ahead and do that by subtracting 7 from both sides of our inequality. So we'll have the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than or equal to 4. Okay, well now that our absolute value expression is isolated, let's go ahead and break that down into two simple inequalities. So I have my x minus 3 is less than or equal to 4, and then when I do the negative side, I'll have x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 4. And again, when I do the negative side, I have to switch the sign of the inequality. So instead of less than or equal to, it'll be greater than or equal to. So now let's go ahead and solve both of these simple inequalities. So x is less than or equal to 7. And here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this now and kind of get a visual idea of what this looks like. So we have negative 1 down here, and we have 7 up here. And we're going to use closed circles because we have an, the equal sign with our inequality. And the first one says x is less than or equal to 7. So it's going to be from 7 here and less than that, so all the way down. And the negative 1 will be from negative 1 greater than that. So it looks like we have this intersection here that I'm actually going to shade for our solution. And again, I did just say it's an intersection. So as far as our compound inequalities are concerned, 
That's what it's going to be. And we can actually rewrite this as a trichotomy. We could say negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. And that's what that will look like when we solve it that way. But in general, we started with our absolute value inequality. We solved it by splitting it into two simple inequalities. And we were able to graph it and write our solution as a compound inequality. In this last example, I have negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3, and that's less than 4. Well, in order to isolate this absolute value expression, I need to start by dividing both sides of this inequality by negative 2. So here I have my absolute value expression isolated. But you'll notice I divided by a negative, so I need to flip the sign of the inequality. And 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And we just got done saying that, remember, absolute value expressions are always greater than or equal to zero, so they're always non-negative. So what I have here is this non-negative expression, and I'm saying it's greater than negative two. Well, it kind of doesn't matter what I plug for x, it's always going to be true. So this is a true statement, which means when I graph it, you can kind of put zero in the middle, and what I'm going to do is shade the entire real number line. So I'm going to say the solution here is all real numbers. And that's my answer. And that's how I graph it. And this was my original absolute value inequality. In these last two examples, I want to look at special cases when solving absolute value inequalities. So here we uh, are going to start by isolating this absolute value expression. So we'll add 1 to both sides. So we'll have the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than negative 4. Well, maybe you kind of see an immediate problem here. Absolute value expressions here are always non-negative, or we could say they're always greater than or equal to 0. But we're saying this absolute value expression is less than negative 4. Well, that's never going to happen. So this is no solution. Because what we have here is actually an impossible thing. So how will I go about graphing that? Well, usually I do my number line, I put maybe a 0 in the middle, and I leave it blank. Because there are no values that are solutions to this uh, inequality. And again, when I say no solutions, of course, I mean no real numbers, because this is our real number line.